Numbers 22, 28 says, Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to, t- to speak. And just as I've said, um, I've um, had an interesting journey. And the donkey, he actually saw God working and he listened to God. And I didn't really have that journey, but I'm praying that God, if he can use a donkey, he can use me today. So um, I, I know that God is gracious and kind to us, and I hope you can be gracious and kind and following me on the journey that we're going on today. Um, so let's just pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming together and worship you and learning about you. As you use a donkey, I ask you to use me today. Amen. So my first slide is a picture of my dog. Um, This actually probably doesn't show the size of him. This is him at six months old. Um, At this age, I couldn't pick him up like this, like most people would put their arms around there and pick them up. I couldn't pick him up like that. He was 30 kilos. Um, I went for a walk on the beach with him and um, he started playing with these other dogs and a lady fell on top of them and George was on the bottom and he hops up with his paw in the air and crying and I'm in the middle of the beach which is about 150 metres down the beach and I'm like by myself, I couldn't contact my boys because one was in the Sunshine Coast and one was out on a boat and I was like, okay, what do I do? Okay, so I picked him up and this old man came over and he's like, oh, I think he's broken it and I'm like, oh, that'd be right. Um, So... I had to, because I couldn't put my arms around him, I had to actually pick him up like a toddler, like you put your hand under the bottom and one around the back. And a a child, when you pick them up like that, they're like, all right, I got you, mum, I'm holding on. Dog doesn't understand that. So it was like a balancing act. And then all of a sudden, with my skirt that I had on, my hat flew off. So I had to bend and hold the dog and try and pick up my hat to put my hat back on. And... This gentleman's like, oh, do you need some help? And I'm like, no, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, it's all good. And so I start walking back to the car and this gentleman's walking along beside me and he's like, so are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. He goes, would you like some help? I'm like, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. And then halfway back, George is like, yeah, no, I'm fine now too. So hops down and we head on back down the um, path, or down the beach, and hop in the car. And then this gentleman was there the whole way down and um, the, <laughs> the next morning, my bicep was a little bit sore. And um, God, as he is, goes, hmm, maybe if you'd actually let that fellow help you, you wouldn't have had a sore arm. I'm like, yep, okay, no worries, God. And he goes, and have you thought about it? Maybe I'm that old man beside you in your life and do you think that sometimes you could let me help you? Because a lot of the time, <clears throat> oh, a strong, independent woman, I can do it myself. I don't need any help. My children are like, you're so stubborn, Mum. I'm like, no, 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 I can just do it. I don't need help, I can do it. And God's going, yeah, I know that my children can do things, but do you know what? I want to help you because it's a lot easier if he he helps us along. And I've got way sidetracked, so we're going well. (laughs) So really what I'm saying is... Sometimes we rely on ourself and we don't let God help us. We trust self instead of trusting God. There's many reasons why I can do it myself, but there's many reasons why we should let God help us. And um, I just want to bring up slide, the second slide. Psalm 9, 10 in the New King James talks about trust. And those who know your name, am I writing, reading the right one? Yes, I'm reading the right one. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. 
For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. And Psalm 37, 3 to 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And <laughs> um, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. This is a scripture, as I said, I've been going to church since I was six. Um, I've been given this scripture a number of times, so I think feel like God's been trying to teach me this um, trust thing for a very long time. I've even been given it by a non-Christian family member, which I was like, okay, God, <laughs> excellent. And the story I just told you was last year, so I'm still learning the trust thing, So, and I'm nearly 50 years old, so <laughs> eventually. I. But you know what? God's gracious. He actually... It's not a perfect thing. We don't have to be perfect. He just wants us to give it a go. He just wants us to keep coming back. Like, um, I've, I can do this throughout the year. I can be going well and then whoop, go off to the side and then I can come back and whoop, off to another side. But God's like, hey, it's okay. I love you. My, I died on the cross for grace. I died on the cross to, to cover the sin. It's by my grace that you can come in. And so, got sidetracked again, sorry. So trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So trust, put confidence in, put hope in, be sure, be secure in the Lord with all of your heart. And your heart, your understanding, your will, your mind, your inner man. And lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And I looked up the word acknowledge just to... I like to expand things. I like this... Um, I like read the Amplified sometimes because I like the extra words to explain things to me, a bit simple. Um, so in all your ways acknowledge, be aware of, be conscious of, accept or admit the existence or truth of, recognise the importance of him. In all your ways be aware of, be conscious of, accept or admit the existence or truth of, recognise the importance of him and he shall direct your path. He will make a smooth and straight path. And I used to really struggle with that again, that part of the verse, and he shall direct your path, he will make your path straight because I was like, oh, well, I went off. I went off to the side. I didn't follow the straight path. Does that nullify me, God? Does that actually make me, like, when I was standing at the back, the reason I was in tears was because I was like, God, you're so gracious. Like, I'm actually going to be speaking from the pulpit today. But as far as I was concerned, take me back 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, and I was void. Like, I can't do anything in church because I've, I've gone off the, the track. And God's going, no, nah, that's not what it's about. I love you and I'm, I'm not using you because you're so special and I'm not using you because you've got, these, got it all going on. I'm using you because you're willing to lay down your life. You're willing to actually go, God, I need you. God, I, I need you at the centre. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. And in saying that, I'm not the greatest at keeping that all the time. So I do forget that. And like I said, I take up and I can do it by myself. I can do it by myself. And God's going, hmm, yeah. Well, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Oh, okay, right, right. It's like, thanks, God. Thanks. Um, there's, I think it's the next one, next slide, uh, no, keep going, next one, yeah, 
So this is one of the um, one of the things that I was given uh, when I was young, and that really freaked me out. The hand holding onto the swing, because it's not actually holding it; it's just in the fingers. So that's a huge amount of trust to sit on a swing and swing back. Like if you don't just sit on a swing and just do a little, you actually got to see how high you can go and just, and you've got to be the highest. If your name's Christy, you've got to be the highest and you've got to be able to do it better than your brother. And um, So to actually trust that in the fingers, that, that was huge. I was like, God, I don't know if I can do that. And I actually, I know that we should be all or nothing, but I just, as I've journeyed and got closer to God and I actually feel like God's going, it's okay, it's okay to doubt me sometimes. I still love you. As long as you come back to me, as long as you keep, as long as you keep coming back to me and going, God, I just don't know what to do. God, I've stuffed up. And I've just gone off a little bit, but I'm coming back to you. He'd prefer it if we didn't. But we all are going to have a little trips. I'm just really good at doing the fall over and just not the trips. But some of us just do trips, so good, well done to you, you people. But I'm not one of them people. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I just... <laughs> back to my arm... So my arm, I didn't just pull it. There wasn't just a little bit of a, a, a pull in my arm that healed over a couple of weeks. I've actually still got a problem with it now. And that was back in April last year. And at the time, um, I was actually seeing someone to try and get movement back in my body because I have a, a condition with my back. And I was making really good progress. And um, I did this and went to her a couple of weeks later and she said, you can't come back to me until that's healed because we can't move forward. So you're going to have to actually go and get that fixed. And I felt like it was like, God was like, well, if you'd let me help you, you wouldn't have had that extra pain. And sometimes, as I keep talking about, sometimes we have the detours. Sometimes we go, I can do it in my own strength and, and that just adds to the journey that we have. But that's okay, as long as we come back in. Just be better not to have to have that extra to deal with and process That'd be nice. <laughs> As, back on the um, the verse, um, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. It made me think about um, the highway from um, Ballina to the Gold Coast. When I was young, it was um, a two and a half hour drive to get to the Gold Coast to go shopping. Um, Cause it was, you'd go inland and there's lots of corners and hills and towns and stops and starts. And now there's a highway straight through the center. So now there's this r easy route straight through nice and smooth. And that's the path that God has for us. And sometimes we go on the detour but we can come back and we get to the same destination. Ooh. So, as I've been saying, I'm, I'm really good at doing things in my own strength and I've been on a healing journey with God over the past six to seven years. And um, at the end of last year, um, we had quite a, a, quite a, a big situation happen with a family member which changed life as they knew it. It was like one minute life was going this way and then a completely different direction. And because of 
uh, my journey of reaching out to God and pushing into God, I was like, well, to be honest, I still was quite stressed out and because I was walking with this family member and turmoil was around, but I kept coming back going, God, I, I actually reached out to some godly friends and said, can you pray? Can you just pray, God, make a way in this situation? And um, God didn't change the situation. There was still a crappy situation that we're still walking in and still going down, down that direction in. And it's, that is what it is. However, there has been glimpses of God through that. God has made a way where there was, where there, I saw no way. There was times where um, I just put God, every time something would flare up, I'm like, I just don't see what we can do in this. And I'm like, God, I just put it in the palm of my hand. Father, I give it back to you. Lord, you need to make a way here. And things would just open up and there'd be everything that we need would just happen. There was one situation where um, we had to gather some things and um, I just thought, I sent a message saying we need to collect it at this time. Um, can we do it at this time? And I'm like, mm, yeah, they're going to say no. They're going to block it. It's going to be a backwards and forwards and frustrations. And, and I just put my hand on my um, phone and went, Father, I give this to you. Lord, make a way. You said you're with us. I need you to make a way. They text me back and said, yep, no worries. Come around that time. We'll be out. We'll be gone. So you can, it'll be a free reign to get the stuff. And that's God. Like, that, that was God. And I was just like, thank you. And so he actually, the difference um, from <laughs> trying to carry my dog and not allowing anybody to help and in so many other situations in my life where I've gone, I can do it, I'll just push through, to walking through this journey. Like, I think sometimes we think that by putting it in God's hands, God's going to make it all lovely and all pretty and it's going to be this nice smooth path and there's not going to be any turmoil and everybody's going to do everything the way you want it to be. And, and it's, that's not the way it is. God didn't actually say that. God just said, I'll be with you. You'll walk through the valley of the shadow. You'll walk through problems and issues and frustrations and hard times and, and hurts but God will be with you if you actually allow him to be there with you. He will make a way. He will shine a light in a dark place if you trust him, if you bring him into that situation, if you trust with open hands to, the pro to him. So when I was talk when Alan asked me to talk, I was like, okay, yeah, I've got some stuff I can talk about, but what do I do? Like, you always have, like, three steps. So you've got this issue, and then we've got three steps to follow. And I'm like, oh, you're not very good at that, Alan. And he's like, well, just pray about it and see if you can find one. I feel like I found one. So I've got one thing to give you, and hopefully it relates for you at all. Um, but to build trust, we need to spend time and we need to give of time. So kids trust us because they're constantly around us. And um, recently I've been spending a lot of time with a family and um, when I first was around them, their kids would say hello. But now when I see their kids, they run up to me and hug me because they've spent time with me. They trust me. They know me. They know that I will be there for them and love on them. And and um, yeah. Sorry just a moment that I had there <laughs> but the more time we spend and um, communicate with people and open ourselves up with people the more we trust someone 
So how can we relate that to God? Um, by spending time with him. Uh, I've actually written down here, if, um, I'm going to read it. For many years I could come to church, talk to God in the worship, listen to God's message through the, um, this, the preacher, um, and even some Sundays through conversations after the message, I'd be built up, excited for the week ahead, stirred up to learn more about God, and then Monday had come and oh, it's just, just too busy this morning. I'll just, I, won't, I haven't got time to read the word at the moment. I'll just, just go. And by the end of the week, you, you didn't actually end up spending time with God. And as I, again, there's probably many of you that are very diligent and great at doing that daily um, devotional. I'm not the greatest. I will admit it. I am, it's been a journey for me. Um, and... But the, since I have been doing that, whenever I have made an effort and actually gone, God, even if it's, um, even if, and I know it, it's actually better if we spend time reading a devotional and praying and reading a scripture. And but you know what? Just to be real, some days I just listen to the um, the verse of the day on the Bible app. And I'm like, God, that's all i got for you today and I'll have a chat with him on my drive to work. And some days I just, I'm like, I'm too tired to wake up yet. I've had a bad night's sleep, my back's killing, I know I've got a big day ahead. So I, silly me, recently I've put on Revelation. So I love the fact that the Bible app, you can just, you can go to the, and you just push it and it, you listen to it. And didn't get back to sleep playing Revelation, but that's okay. But some days that's what it is. And then other days I actually do. I actually get up and um, I read a devotional and I um, write out in my journal about what God's talking to me about. But that ain't an everyday thing for me at the moment. I want to get there, but just being real, <laughs> I'm still trying. I'm still working towards that one. I don't, I don't, um, I'm not saying do that. It's not the best way. The best way is actually to read every day and do a devotional every day. Um, but that's, I'm just being, I just want to be real and that's where I'm at. But God actually still says, okay, I can see you and you're, you're doing okay. You're giving me some time each day. And the funny thing is, <laughs> we're getting ready for this message, um, my heart my heart always has been, I don't want to talk and just do, fill a, fill a void. I just don't want to talk just to, to talk. God, I want, I, I, want to, I want each person, whenever I talk, to get something. Like just one, even if it's just one point, I want you, I want you to, to talk through that. So because um, Alan asked me a couple of weeks ago and um, because of that being my heart, I've been throwing backwards and forwards on a daily basis, um, talking to him about what he wants me to talk about. Talk, am I going the right direction? What scriptures? And then I get the concordance out. And, and, and I'm just constantly talking to him throughout the day when I'm not, not constantly, that's not true, not constantly, because I work and I talk to friends and I'm not talking to him while I'm talking to friends. But in those gaps of time when there's space cadet times, I'm talking to him going, okay, God, what's going on? What do you want to do? And the... <laughs> I was going to say the funny thing, but the cool thing, it's not funny, but it is funny. I've had some hiccups this week in my world, some, some things that could have normally sort of whoop, sent me off my track, but because I'd been constantly talking with God throughout the week, it was, it was like, oh God, you've got it, it's okay. And I was like... <laughs> So it works. <laughs> so when I turn time with you, you actually, you don't change the situation, but you're with me through the situation. Okay, right. And I know, I know for a fact, oof, let's hope it's not a fact. Let's hope that it's, I do follow this on. But I hope that that's what I do, start to actually give him more of my world, more of my time each day, because I've seen the reality of it. I've seen him come in at times when 
everything just looks really crap. He didn't change the crap, but he met me in it. He brought a peace because um, my, my generational line is anxiety and fear. And I can easily slip into to feeling like that because it's just what I was around. So the default is, oh, my gosh, what's going on? Oh, I'm going to stress about it. And since I've been bringing God into the, my world, God's going, no, you don't, just give it to me. You, and um, I used to always say to my, my grandmother was one that really struggled with it. And I said, Nan, does it change anything by stressing about it? Is it making you feel any better? I was stressing about it. And she's like, no. I'm like, oh, just let it go. And I'm like, it's not that easy. <laughs> when I actually started to experience it myself, it ain't that easy to step out of when you're in an anxiety state or a fear state. But it is easy to look to God. It is easy. Like, I have been through situations where I couldn't pray. I just was in such anxiety, consumed by anxiety, that... I couldn't pray, I couldn't read my word, but I knew that worship touched me. That's my thing. So I scrolled through YouTube trying to find us, and there's one song I found, and um, it's light, the lighthouse song, My Lighthouse, My Lighthouse, Shining in the Darkness, I Will Follow You, and, and it talks about him bringing you straight to shore. And I actually was able to sleep. I'd spent three days where I didn't, couldn't sleep, and I found this worship and I just put it on repeat and God just brought peace. In that turmoil, in that dark time, he didn't change what was going on, but he changed what was going on inside of me. Just went sidetrack again, sorry. <laughs> so... Um, again, I've been reading a um, devotional and um, it talked about um, the morning devotion. Every morning we wake up and we are hungry to eat and every few hours our body needs to be fed and some of us will have a shake, some of us will have a piece of fruit, some of us will have a massive big breakfast um, of scrambled eggs and toast and stuff. And then we, some of us will have a morning tea, some of us won't, some of us will have a lunch and, a mass, and then, then an afternoon tea and we keep feeding and we keep eating to fuel our physical bodies because if we don't, by the end of the day we're struggling or we're hangry or we're just... I actually feel sick... I get feel sick if I haven't eaten, or we just have no like we just feel flat. And they actually related that back to the spirit. And uh, we talked um, in John six thirty two thirty five. That's one of our slides. Sorry, I've jumped around. Um, the the version before. Or I did, did I not put it on there? I'm so sorry. So it was John 6, 3, 32 to 35. Um, and in the New King James Version, it says, Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread. Always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. And then now the Amplified, I, I just love the Amplified because it just gives a little bit of a different view. Next slide. Jesus replied to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never be hungry, and the one who believes in me as Saviour, will never be thirsty, for that one will be sustained spiritually. So when we come and give him time, that fills us, that feeds us in that morning, that allows us to um, walk throughout the day. 
So in this devotional, I'm going to read what, they, what she actually says. Upon waking, we are hungry for heaven, and yet we fill it with a scroll or many. Social media scroll for the older people in, the, um, in here. As the day moves forward and the belly still empty, we feel it again. When a person gives us a measure of love, a like on social media again, so like the, the, the tick, a look, before bed, the soul, if visible, would be skeletal, barely able to stand on its own or smile with all its teeth. The body who holds this almost dead thing feels alive because we've given it some food, because it depends on every other bread except the one the Father sent. I, I just love that picture. So we wake up in the morning and our spirit's going, feed me, feed me, and we pick up our phone and have a look at Instagram or Facebook or um, we might watch a television program or I don't, I don't know what people do other than look at this Instagram or Facebook. That's what, because the phone's always there, so you just pick it up. But then we go start through the day. So we're fed by this, um, oh gosh, look at that person's life. They're just, okay, oh, I wish my life was like that. And then we go into the day and we still haven't fed our spirit, but we fe keep feeding our soul with emptiness and we get to the end of the day and we're, our spirit's pretty much dragging its feet and God's going, me, just come to me, I can feel you, I, I, I'm here, come. And we're like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like me, oh, no, no, don't help, no, 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 I don't need help, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. But... I just really um, encourage you to, to come in and spend that time each day. Give that God that time. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at myself. I'm reading my notes and I've already said what I was just about to say. Um, yeah, so I encourage you... Um, Another, another thing that I've read recently, um, Craig Grishel said a statement on his um, Instagram recently and it was like, ooh. It says, you have time for what you choose to have time for. You have time for what you choose to have time for. And that's something that's challenged me recently. So I have time to pick up my phone or I have time to go for a walk before I work or I have time to sort out the kids' church roster or I have time to do a little bit extra work because I'm a bit behind, so I'll do that before I start to get ready for work or I can choose to put God in that, that place. I can choose God in that moment and even if it's five minutes and even if it's ten or an hour 10 minutes, not 10 hours, <laughs> even if it's a verse or, or um, a devotional or reading a whole chapter, if I put him first, he'll walk with me. He's always walking with you, but we'll actually recognise that he's actually walking with you throughout your day. So that's me, Katie. <laughs>